Hello again everybody, it's game 67 in the 1977 Chicago White Sox Southside Hitmen Re Stratomatic Replay. Today takes us on the road to Old Metropolitan Stadium in Minneapolis as the Sox take on the Twins in the first game of a three game set. Uh, brief road trip then they come back home to play Seattle and these Twins again. Before I get started, um, sometimes I open baseball cards before I start. This time I thought I'd pull out a little more memorabilia. Uh, this is nothing financially, I mean, it's, it's, they're basically worthless, probably. But they're the three baseballs that I caught in my lifetime at baseball stadiums. Um, I didn't actually catch any of them, but they bounced or rolled to me, whichever the case may be. I never caught one in the air, but I did walk away with three of them. Uh, over time. First one is from the Eastern League, Richmond Flying Squirrels. Uh, can't, I don't know who the president of the Eastern League was. I can't read that signature, but there's the little minor league uh, logo there. Eastern League. I uh, don't know how that smudge got on there. Made in China, go figure. Uh, Rawlings. And uh, caught this one, or it rolled to me or bounced to me. I'm going to look at it a couple of years ago. Uh, at one of the Flying Squirrels games. So that's the Eastern League ball. The next one is the International League ball. And I got this at the team formerly known as the Richmond Braves when they were in town. I think I got this in, I want to say 2007, either 07 or 08. Randy Mobley, the president of the IL with his little signature there. Again, the minor league logo. A um, little smudge there, not too bad otherwise. Again, the little China logo there. Uh, Rawlings, once again. And I don't know enough about the stitching on these things. I'm just trying to figure out, because they're talking about stitches having an effect on home runs this year. And these balls look like the stitching's up pretty good. But, of course, these are older balls, too. So those two I got from the minor leagues. My only major league acquisition came in 1987 from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore off the bat of Gary Ward. I don't know who the Oriole pitcher was, but it was in 1987. Yankees at the Orioles, and I remember Gary Ward was the batter. So the Orioles probably had a left-handed pitcher. Maybe it uh, could have been uh, Scott McGregor, perhaps. I don't know. There's Bobby Brown signature there for the official American League ball. Uh... Got some splotches on here. Don't know. If, of course, this is, what, 30-something years old. So it's probably been through the ringer. It's been sitting in, on my, not my bookcase, but dresser drawer or whatever. So obviously I didn't, I mean, it's not worth anything as far as, you know, being nostalgic, uh, you know, being a collector's item. But it is kind of nostalgic. And it does make me think of that game. Again, this, these stitches are a little bit lower. But, like I said, I don't know what the modern baseballs are like. But anyway, those are the three baseballs that I did acquire over time. Didn't catch any of them in the air, unfortunately. But, got a fortuitous bounce. Or, yeah, mostly it was a bounce, I think. From the ball being above me and then gravity taking its course, moving it down the stands to where I could actually get it. Alright, now on to the game. It is the Twins and the White Sox. And starter for the Twins today will be Mr. Paul Thormisgaard. He is a right-hander. And coming into this game, he is 5-7 with a 5.07 ERA. He'll be facing the knuckleballer, Wilbur Wood. And on the replay, Wilbur Wood is 3-3 three three with a 3.52 ERA. So those are your opposing starters. Thormisgaard against Wood. And now let's look at the starting lineups with the averages. So first for the White Sox, Ralph Gar will lead off in left. He's hitting 275, two homers, 18 runs driven in. Bannister's a shortstop. He's hitting 290 with one home run and 22 runs driven in. Chet Lemon hitting 240, playing center field, batting third. Seven home runs, 28 runs driven in. Lamar Johnson's at first. He'll he hits 287, four homers, 19 runs driven in. Oscar Gamble's in right field today, not DH. He's in right field. Hitting 281, 10 homers, and 32 runs driven in. 
Royal Stillman's the DH, 250 with two homers and five driven in. George Ward is at second, hitting 268, 10 homers and 31 runs driven in. Eric Soderholm's at third, 246, eight homers, 22 runs driven in. And Jim Essie in the catcher, 337, six homers and 31 runs driven in. And there you see Wilbur Wood. For the Twins, it's a loaded lineup. Lyman Bostock leads off in center, hitting 362, four homers and 51 runs driven in. Jerry Terrell's at third, 223, no homers and four runs driven in. Rod Carew, an amazing 426 at this point, 12 homers, 61 runs driven in. And possible MVP candidate Larry Heisel, 337, 22 home runs, 64 runs driven in. Disco Dan Fords in right field, 292, 7 and 43. Craig Cusick's the DH, 180, 5 homers, 17 runs driven in. Butch Weininger, the catcher, 273, 3 and 30. Roy Smalley, 264, 6 and 29. Bob Randall's at second, hitting 242, no homers, 8 runs driven in. And of course, Thomas Guard, 5 and 7 with a 507 ERA. Let's look at the standings. Texas is leading the division right now uh, through this date. They are 41 and 24. Kansas City's two games back, 40 and 27. Twins are 39 and 29, three and a half back. And there's the Sox in fourth, 35 and 31. Oakland's at 34 and 32. California, 28 and 37. Seattle, 31 and 43. So there you go. If you're up to date, somebody had asked earlier about the standings and, and whatnot, so I thought I would go ahead and put that out there. Do have the rule book handy just in case I need to refresh my memory because I've been going back and forth between basic and advanced and super advanced. So I want to make sure that if we're doing advanced, that we're doing it correctly. Now we are doing super advanced fielding, but steals are advanced. So when I do the advanced stealing out of the rule book, I'm using these deductions in the rule book. In section 22. Actually, section 22.23 to be specific. All right, we are ready to go. After all that pomp and circumstance, so Paul Thomasgard finishing up his warm-up tosses, and he'll be facing Ralph Gar, leadoff man for the White Sox. Again, just to refresh your memory, Gar, 275, two homers and 18 runs driven in. And game 67 is now underway. We get a 5-10 off of Thomas guard. 5-10 is a fly to center. There is a little triangle there, but that's only if you're using ballparks, which we are not. So it's simply a fly ball to center field. Handled by Bostock, one away, and Gar is retired. Brings up Alan Bannister, hitting 290. Homer and 22 runs driven in. Short stop. 2-7. Two 2-7, seven. Two seven. he's going to fly to center as well. So Bostock again. Makes the play, two up, two down. Brings up Chet Lemon in center field. 240, seven home runs, 28 runs driven in. 5-7, five, 5-7 seven. Five, seven is a base hit. 1-11 to 11 is a double. 12-20 to 20 is going to be a single. And it's a 12, so it's a single for Chet Lemon. Two out single. Now the question is, he's only a C stealer, so he's not going to go anywhere. They're going to see if Lamar Johnson can do something for him. Johnson at first base is hitting 287. Four homers and 19 runs driven in. 4-8. Four, 4-8 eight. Four, is a ground ball to third, handled by Terrell, and that's going to end the inning. And the Sox get the hit, but that's about it. We go to the bottom of the first. It is Chicago nothing, and the Twins coming to bat. And on the mound for the Sox, knuckleballer Wilbur Wood. And Wilbur Wood has got his work cut out for him against this tough Twins lineup. You saw the averages early. I'll repeat them again as they come to, to the plate. Lyman Bostock hitting 362, four homers and 50 runs, 51 runs driven in. 3-6 against the lefty. And that's another base hit. He's going to improve his average again. 1 to 13 is a double. 14 to 20 is a single. That is a single for Lyman Bostock. He's a B stealer, so and Essien's a zero arm. So the B stealer would be a 13 to start and then the minus three for being held would make him a 10. So we'd have a 50-50 shot if he wants to try it. They're going to go ahead and try it. Try to be aggressive. Gene Mock wants to be aggressive. One through 10 he makes it. It's a 12. They got him. So Essien throws him out. How about that? Try to be aggressive and it did not pay off. 
Here's Jerry Terrell, third baseman, hitting 223. No homers and four runs driven in. 3 7 against the lefty Wood. Ground ball, second base A. That would have been a double play had they not. Uh, had they not sent the runner, so there you go. Would have been two outs anyway. Now, had they been playing super advanced with the runner being held and stuff, that would have gotten through. But we're not doing all that, so we're just in the advanced mode. So Rod Carew now is up with two outs and the base is empty. 426, 12 homers, and 61 runs driven in. 6-7, lefty on lefty, 6-7. That's a solid single, so Carew finds the hit on Wilbur Wood's card. And he keeps it up. He's an A-stealer, so he's going to definitely be thinking about running. 15 is how he starts out. Minus 2 for being held is a 13. So a 1-13, to 13 and Carew will make it. So Mock wants to get him in scoring position. 1-13, to 13, he'll make it. Whoops, let's roll it correctly here. And he does. Stolen base for Carew. So he is in scoring position for the... <clears throat> Dynamic Larry Heisel. <clears throat> Could almost say about walking Heisel. He's hitting 337, 22 homers, and 64 runs driven in. But they're going to pitch to him. 1 5. Is it a mistake? Yes, it is. It's a single to center field. So most likely that's going to be a run. We'll check the run rating of Carew. He was being held. So he starts out with a 17. Lemon, his arm is probably a 0. And it is. So it's going to stay at 1 to 17, but now there's two outs, so that makes it 1 to 19. So unless we roll a 20, he's going to make it. And he does. So it's an RBI single for Larry Heisel. And since we're doing just advanced, not super advanced, I'm not worried about a Heisel taking second on the throw or any of that stuff. We're just going to let it go as that. All right, so Disco Dan steps to the plate. Twins have a 1 0 lead. Four, 292, 7 homers, 43 runs driven in. 1-6, struck him out, and that's going to end the inning. But two out magic by the Twins, Carew and Heisel. They're two MVP candidates. Combined for a run, and at the end of one, it's the Twins one, and the White Sox nothing. So, good news for the White Sox is Thomas guard struggled this year, so they, you know, they definitely can score some runs of their own. They're going to need to, to keep up with this Twins offense. Here is Oscar Gamble, right fielder, 281, 10 homers, 32 runs driven in. 5-5 five, five is a fly to left. That's easy play out there for Heisel. One away. Gamble is gone. Here's Stillman. Royal Stillman. 6-10 against a lefty. Fly ball center field X. Look at all these hits when they found fly ball center field X, which just happens to be Bostock. And Bostock, defensively, in the outfield and center is a 2E4. Two 2E4. Two e two and a 13, he'll get to that for sure. E4, and that is a 6. E4, there is no 6. There's a 4, but no 6. And the 2 and a 13 is a F2. But nobody's on base to worry about that part, so it's just a good play for Bostock as he. Runs that one down. Stillman's retired. Two up, two down for George Orta. Second baseman and Orta. 268, 10 home runs, 31 runs driven in. 6-10 against the lefty. We're right back to the same roll again. Fly ball center field X. He's a 2-E-4. 2-2. Two two. This is a little bit different story this time. 2-2 two two is almost certainly going to be a base hit. 2-2 two two is actually a double. And that's a 10 on an E4, and there is no 10, but it is going to be a double. So that one's going to drop in for a base hit as Orta manages to finally get one past Bostock. And that puts him at second base with two, at, two down for Eric Soderholm with a chance to tie the ball game. Soderholm, 246, 8 homers, 22 runs driven in. 211. 211 is a base hit to left field, so let's see if Orta can score. He does have that two out boost. He was being held, so that knocks him down from a 17 to a 16. But there are two outs, that makes it a 19, and then the left fielder arm, which is Heisel, and Heisel is a plus two. 
So pretty much anything other than a 20, and he will make it. And he does, so it's a tie ball game. As Orta with two out magic, a two out double, followed by a solder home single. And the Sox have tied the game at a run apiece. Bottom of the order coming through for Bob Lemon's crew. Here's Jim Essien, 337, six homers, 31 runs driven in. 1-2, and that's going to be a walk. Keeps the inning going. Puts runners at first and second. Flip the order over to Ralph Gar. Gar with a chance to drive home the go-ahead run. 4-8, four, 4-8, eight. Four, eight. he will not do it. He flies to center field once again, so they're keeping... Bostock busy out there. It's going to end the inning. But the Sox do pick up that run thanks to some two-out magic. And at the end of a one-and-a-half here at uh, Metropolitan Stadium, we're tied at one. All right, so Wilbur Wood back out on the bump. And he's going to be facing D.H. Craig Cusick. Craig Cusick. And he's hitting 180 on the year, really struggling. Five homers, 17 runs driven in. 4-5, and that's a ground ball to short, handled by Bannister. One away. And that will bring up the catcher, Butch Weininger, switch hitter, turns around, bats right-handed against the lefty Wood. Weininger, 273, three homers, 30 runs driven in. 5-6, five, 5-6, six. Five, six, another ground ball to Bannister. Two up, two down. And that's going to take us to Roy Smalley, shortstop. Smalley, 264, six homers, 29 runs driven in. 111, he's going to line it to solder home at third. The Twins go down 1, 2, 3 here in the second. So two innings in the books here at Metropolitan Stadium. And we are tied to a run apiece. Wood has a fatigue of six. Thomas Guard only has a fatigue of five, so he can start getting tired early, so... Gene Mock will have to get his bullpen maybe tuned up a little earlier than he would like. Here's Bannister. He will lead things off. 1-5 against the right-hander. He's going to ground a second. That's going to be Bob Randall territory, and he'll make the play easily. One away. For Chet Lemon. Lemon singled and was stranded his first trip. 4-8. 4-8. He's going to ground this time to third. Terrell will make the play. Two up, two down, and that takes us to Lamar Johnson. 5-2, and that's a solid single to right field. So two out single for Lamar Johnson. He's an E-stealer. He's not going anywhere. He's not going to be held. And it brings up Oscar Gamble. Right fielder. 3-10, 3-10. He's going to foul out to the catcher. Fouls out to Weiniger, and that's going to do it for the Sox here in the third. Nothing doing. We go to the bottom of the third, still one to one. And I did look at the box score on this game. Richie Zisk did pinch hit in this game, so that's good news for the Sox. That means he's close to coming back. They're really still missing Jim Spencer big time, though. They, that's the bat in the middle of the lineup that they really are missing. So they're looking to get him back. I'd like to get him back as soon as possible. Didn't check his return date, so don't know how far that is away. But you would think he'd be coming back shortly. All right, here's Bob Randall, last guy we didn't do the average for. 242, no homers, 8 RBI. 5-5 five, five against a right-hander. And that's an in-home run chance, but he does have weak power. So the 1-10 to 10 would only be a single, not a home run. And a 11-20 would be a double. It's a 2, so it's a single. So it would have been a home run had he had the power. But it's just going to be a single. He's the East Hill. He will not be held. Certainly not going to go anywhere. Here's Bostock. And now Tabby. Hold on, Tabby. I put the ball, the baseballs on the floor. And now Tabby wants to play with them. Sorry, Tabby. We don't want that. All right, here's Bostock. 1 6 against the lefty. Struck him out. So Bostock down on strikes. That brings up Jerry Terrell. 6 5. Fly ball to right. Handled by Gamble, who's usually usually the DH, but he is playing right field tonight. So, a rare opportunity for him to get the glove out. Here is Carew. 
One, two against the lefty. He's going to walk. So two out walk. Puts runners at first and second. But Randall is, of course, preventing Carew from trying to steal. Here is Larry Heisel. Neither runner is being held. Here's Heisel. Two, nine against the lefty. Struck him out. So Wilbur Wood gets that knuckleball past Heisel. Big strikeout there to get out of the inning. And three innings are in the books here at Metropolitan Stadium. We are still tied at one. So thought it would be a slugfest, but both pitchers are hanging on there pretty good. And now we move on to the top of the fourth, and it's going to be Royal Stillman to face Thormisgaard. 5-11 against the lefty is a walk. So a leadoff walk to Stillman. Leadoff walks can come back to bite you. He is a D-stealer. He will be held, but he's not going to go anywhere. Here is Orta. 6-6 six, six against the lefty, and he's going to walk. So back-to-back -back walks to start the fourth. Not exactly how Thormisgaard wants to start. Gene Mock going crazy in the dugout. Can't defend the walks. Here's Soderholm. 6-12. 6, -12. six is a ground ball first base X. That's Carew. So let's check Carew's defensive prowess. And Carew at first base is a 2-E-11. So a 2-E-11. 2 and a 12. 2 and a 12 is a G1. So possible double play. That is a total of 17. And we said he is an E-11. So first base, E-11. There is no 17. There's a 15 and an 18, but no 17. So it is going to be a double play. 3-6-3. Three, three. Nicely turned by Carew and by Smalley. So 3-6-3 three, three, double play. Stillman will go to third. But now there are two outs. And the big inning chance for the White Sox might be coming to an end. Although Jim Essien is their leading hitter. 5-8. 5-8, not this time. He's going to fly to right. And out there to handle it very easily is Disco Dan. As he dances under it. And the inning is over. So Thormisgaard pitches around two leadoff walks. And gets out of it with nothing doing for the Sox. Bottom of the fourth we go. Still 1-1. One one. And Wilberwood back out. We'll be facing... The man who just caught that last fly ball, Disco Dan. 110 against the lefty, 110. Ground ball back to Wilbur Wood. One away. And that's going to send us to Craig Cusick, the DH. Used to call him Craig Cusick when I was little. 3 7, 3 7. He's going to walk. So a one out walk to Cusick. He's a C stealer. He will be held, but he was not going to try to run. Here's Weiniger. 4-10, switch hitter batting right, 4-10's a fly to left, and there's two away. So Wilbur Wood, one more out to get to finish out the inning, that's Roy Smalley. 1-10, and he's going to get it, ground ball back to Wilbur Wood, easy inning for Wood. And down go the Twins, so we got a, we're in the middle of a bona fide pitching duel here, 1-1 one one as we go to the 5th. Now this is the point of weakness inning for Thormisgaard. As he has that number five, he has that number five right here for his fatigue. So this is his point of weakness. Ralph Gar to lead us off. Gar a two eight, two eight for Gar. Ground ball back to Thormisgaard. So that's one away. Gar is retired. Sends us to Alan Bannister, shortstop. 2-5 for Bannister, and he's going to fly to left. That's out number two. I will be using Zisk to pinch hit in this game since he did in real life, and I want to get him in a bat anyway, so I don't remember who he pinched it for in the real game, but I'll find a place for him somewhere. 4-7. 4-7 is a two-out walk to Chet Lemon. And he is a C-stealer. He's not going to be going anywhere, but he will be held. He runs enough to be held. And here's Lamar Johnson. 
Six eight, six eight. Ooh, that's bad news for Thomas Guard. Six eight, one to four is a triple. Five to twenty is a single. Two stars, and that's a five. So we just got lucky there. It could have been a triple. Instead, it's only a single, but it does put runners at the corners with two outs. And now Oscar Gamble, and one more hit, and Thomas Guard will reach his point of weakness. So here is Gamble. 3-3 for Gamble. He's going to ground to first, and that's going to end the inning. So, Dormus Guard escapes, but you don't know how much longer he's going to be able to go because he's going to be close to hitting his fatigue rating. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Still 1-1. One one. And Wilbur Wood back out. Now, he's good till the sixth, so he's all, he's in good shape in the game, not in, not in his physique because if you know Wilbur Wood, a little bit rotund. Here's Bob Randall. 410 against a right hander. 410 is a fly to left. And that's one away. Randall is gone. Back to the top of the order. This is where it gets dangerous. Lyman Bostock. One for two. That's a 6-6. Six, six. That's a ground ball, second base. And that's two away. Now he's gonna face Bob. Or, I'm sorry, Jerry Terrell. He gets Terrell out, then uh, Carew will have to lead off next inning. 4-5, and that's exactly what happens. Ground ball to short. So easy play for Bannister. Inning's over. We've completed five here at Metropolitan Stadium, and we're still tied at one. Definitely not expecting this pitching duel that we're getting, but there you go. Now, Thomas Guard gave up two base runners. So if he can, since we're into the next inning, he can give up two more before he gets tired. Here's Royal Stillman. 2-7 for Stillman. He's going to pop to second. And there's one away. Stillman is retired. Brings up George Orta. Tough lefty. 1-7 and Orta. One is a triple. Anything else will be a single. So most likely a single 5% chance at a triple as I drop the D20 at an in inopportune time. But a one's a triple, anything else will be a single. It's a single. So one out single by Orta. He's a D stealer. They'll go ahead and hold him, but he's not going to go anywhere, obviously. So here is Soderholm. 4-9. That's a one to three single. Anything else, it's a fielder's choice ground ball to first. And it's a one, so it's a single one star. And now Thormus Guard has reached his point of weakness. If they want to take a chance and keep going, he, they will let him face, face Essien, but they do have activity in the bullpen. They do have bullpen activity. And they do have left-hander Tom Bergmeier. Tom Bergmeier is loosening in the bullpen. Here's Essien. 2-3. That's a fly ball to right. Would have been a diamond shot had we been doing advanced, but we're not. Fly ball to right field, B question mark. Now the B question mark means that the runner on second has a chance to try for third. And he can't be thrown out. He either has to hold or he can make it. So if we look at the ground ball or I'm sorry, the fly ball B rules, just to refresh my memory and maybe somebody else's. On the advanced fly ball B question mark. It's the outfitter's arm plus two. So outfitter's arm plus two. Now the ball went to right field, so the outfitter's arm is Disco Dan Ford. And Dan Ford has an arm rating of zero. So no effect there. Run rating for Orta is a 17. So you add 2 to that, makes it a 19. So anything other than a 20, he'll make it. If it's a 20, he has to hold. It's 12, so he does make it to 3rd. So Essien with the fly out does move the runner to 3rd. So runners are now at the corners with 2 outs. And here's Ralph Gar. Now the question is, does Gene Mock want to go to Bergmeier here to face Gar, or are they going to let Thomas Gar try to finish the inning? They are going to, he is going to make the move. He's going to make the move to the bullpen. So Paul Thormersgaard is done. Tom Bergmeier is coming on. Try to get out of this jam. So for 
Thomas guard, he goes five and two thirds, faces 27 batters. Let's check his hits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hits. Don't do the runs or earn runs yet because the runners on base are his responsibility. Can check the walks and strikeouts. Let's see, he didn't walk, he didn't strike out anybody, I don't believe. I don't see any strikeouts on the board. Very rare, zero, zero uh, strikeouts. Does have three walks that I see, four walks actually. So four walks and no strikeouts. Very unusual line there. And the lefty Tom Bergmeier is on, and Bergmeier on the 77 season, 6 and 4 with a 5.09 ERA. He did have seven saves. But Going to him as a lefty out of the bullpen to face Ralph Gar. Try to get out of this. 2 9 for Gar. He's going to ground it back to the pitcher, and that's going to end the inning. And it turns out that Dormers Gar could have also retired him with that, but you don't know that going in. So the 2 9 is just a ground ball back to Bergmeier to end the inning. Keeps the socks off the board, and we now close the book on Dormers Gar, one earned run in his five and two thirds. So we go to the bottom of the sixth, and it is still one to one. And this will be the point of weakness beginning check for Wilbur Wood. And he's got to face Rod Carew, start things off. Carew, 112 against a lefty. He's going to fly to center and he retires Carew. So you got Carew out finally. That's a monumental task in this league. But he did it. Here's Larry Heisel. 4-7 against a right-hander fly to center. So he's Woods kept the big boys in check, and that's why he's only allowed one run. Here's Disco Dan. Actually, he didn't keep him in check in the first inning. That's why he gave it the one run. Everything else has pretty, been pretty good. 1-4 against a lefty. Ground ball to second. That's going to end the inning. Nothing doing there. In fact... Since that first inning, he's only allowed one hit. That was to Randall. Everything else has been a couple of walks and everything else has been outs. So we go to this top of the seventh. Still one to one, and Wood had nothing against this point of weakness, so he's definitely still good to go. Bergmeier has a relief rating of two, so he's certainly good for another inning. Here's Bannister. He only faced one batter so far. Here's Bannister. 3-8 against a lefty. All these hits in column 3 and he found the ground ball to the pitcher. So that's been the bugaboo for the Sox in this game. This ground ball to the pitcher stuff. And there's one away. Here's Chet Lemon. 1-7. And 1-13 to is a double. 14-20. to It's a fly to center. It's a double for Chet Lemon. So Chet Lemon with his second hit of the game. This one's a double. And now maybe the Sox have Hope to break that tie. Here's Lamar Johnson. Lemon will be held. He can run, so he's going to be held. Second base, try to keep him from scoring. 4-7. Four, 4-7 seven. Four, seven is a single two-star, so it's not going to matter if he's held or not. That's a base hit for Lamar Johnson. And the Sox now lead it. 2-1. to one. Double by Lemon. Single by Johnson. And they lead it 2-1. to one. Here's Oscar Gamble. 5-7, five, 5-7, seven, five, seven, fly ball to center, and that's two down. And now with the lefty up, they're going to get a pinch hitter. And it's going to, with lefty Royal Stemlin coming up, they're going to get a pinch hitter. They're going to go ahead and pinch hit with Richie Zisk, who did pinch hit in this game. He's going to stay in the game and play DH. So we know he can hit, we just don't know he, can, we know he can't field yet, so... He is going to be the DH in place of Royal Stillman. The Zisk twins are welcoming, welcoming Zisk back to the fold. 1-8. 1-3 is a single. Anything else he grounds to second, and the inning will be over. And he does. So it's a ground out to second to end the inning. But the Sox pick up the run, and they have now taken the lead as we go to the bottom of the seventh. There's no Harry Carey because we're in Minnesota. But... I don't think the Sox really care about that right now. They're winning 2-1. to one. That's what they care about. They got a 2-1 to one lead as we go to the bottom of the 7th. 
Wilbur Wood has nothing against his point of weakness yet, so he's still definitely good to go. And he'll be facing Cusick, Weiniger, and Smalley here in the seventh. Six five, six fives, a fly to right, handled by Gamble. One away. That'll bring up Weiniger. Three ten for Weiniger against the lefty. Three ten. He's going to ground it back to Wilbur Wood. Two down. So Wilbur Wood has stymied this hot hitting Twins team with that knuckleball. Here's Royal Roy Smalley. Six three against a right hander is a solid single. So two out single by Smalley. He's a D stealer. He will not go anywhere. He will be held, but he's not going to go anywhere. Here's Bob Randall. 6-4. That's a fly ball center field X. That's Chet Lemon. He's a 3 E13. 3 and a 10. He'll get to that. Just a matter of whether it's an error or not. 3 and a 10 for a center fielder is an F2. And that's an E17. That could be bad news. He's an E13 and a 17. It's a two base error right here. A two base error on Chet Lemon. So how about that? That keeps the inning going. It's going to put runners at second and third. So the big E8 on Chet Lemon. Uncharacteristic of Lemon, but he did it. And now that brings up Bostock. And they may walk Bostock, and I think they will. They're going to walk Bostock to load the bases. So an intentional walk to Bostock, and it's going to be Jerry Terrell who has to come through. They didn't want any part of Bostock. So it's going to be Jerry Terrell. Bases loaded, two outs. 3-6 uh, against a lefty. He's going to ground a short, and that's going to end the inning. So the move paid off to walk him. And Wilbur Wood pitches around all that mess. Now on a 3-6 against a lefty, Bostock would have hit a double or a single right here on his card. So shrewd move there by Bob Lemon to not deal with Bostock and let Wood pitch to Terrell, which paid off. So we go to the eighth. It is still a 2-1 to one game for the Sox. Bergmeier is going to be relieved, I think. Check that. He's going to stay in to face order, but we got a new pitcher coming up next for the Twins. It's going to be a right-hander, right-hander Tom Johnson, who actually got the win in the game in real life. Twins won this game 7-6 to six in real life. Tom Johnson got the win in relief. So Tom Johnson will be coming on after Bergmeier faces George Orta. But first things first, Bergmeier and Orta, lefty and lefty. 6-5. Six, 6-5, five. Six, five. ground ball shortstop X. That is Smalley and Roy Smalley defensively. Mr. Smalley is a 3-E36. Decent range, but high errors. Three and a three is probably a base hit, and it is. 36 and an eight, E36. There is no eight, so it's going to be simply a single for Orta. And that's going to do it for Bergmeier. So Bergmeier is gone. He faced seven batters, and he managed to pitch one and a third innings, giving up. So far, one run, although that runner is his responsibility. Uh, I see two hits, three hits. No walks, no sh uh, one walk, no strikeouts. So they still haven't struck anybody out yet, even though they've walked five. So very unusual to have all these walks. So Bergmeier is out of there. And with Eric Soderholm coming up, it's going to be the right-hander Tom Johnson, and on the season he was 16 and 7, 3.13 ERA and 15 saves. So Johnson, long relief man, you can see he's got a three there, so he can certainly go finish out the game for sure. Here is Soderholm, 4-5, four, 4-5. Five, four, five. Ooh, that's bad news. One to six is a home run. He does that normal power. 1-5, to five, rather, is a home run. 6-20 to 20 is a double. They'll probably hold Orta, though. 7 is a double. So Orta will stop at third base. They're not, with nobody out, they're not going to take any chances on the bases. 
Runners are at second and third. Nobody out. Infield's going to have to come in against Jim Essien. Try to choke that runoff. There is Essien. 2-5 for Essien. 2-5. It's a solid double to right field, so the infield being in didn't matter. That's another double. So back-to-back -back doubles off of Tom Johnson. And the Sox put up two more runs. One of them is charged to Bergmeier and close the Ber book on Bergmeier. But Essien from the nine spot does it again with a two-run double, and the Sox lead it 4-1. to one. And Gene Mock pulling his white hair out on this. Here's Ralph Gar. 2-11 for Gar. Ground ball third base B. It's a fielder's choice. No, I'm sorry. He runs on second, so he's got a hole. I was thinking he runs on first. He's on second. He's got a hold. So Essien will stay right where he is. One away. As Terrell throws to Carew. Here's Bannister. 4-7. 1-7 to is a double. Anything else is a fly to left. So 19 is a fly left field B. Not a question mark, so the runner can't go to third. But it is a fly ball out. We're out number two. And probably there's no question mark there because with the fly ball going to left, you don't usually go to third from second base. So here's Chet Lemon. Four six. One and Chet Lemon does it again. Look at that. Four six is a one to four sing, uh, triple. Five to twenty is a single. Either way, at least one run's gonna score. It is a triple though. How about that? Chet Lemon, another triple. He is double single, doubled, and now he's tripled. He's a homer away from the cycle, but probably won't get to bat again. But it is an RBI triple for Chet Lemon. Three runs are in this inning. It is now 5-1 to one White Sox. As they're starting to break this thing open. And the Metropolitan Stadium fans are a little restless. Here's Lamar Johnson. 4-10. He's a right-hander. 4 tens a fly to center. That's going to end the inning. So Johnson abruptly treated there. Three runs. All earned. And we go to the bottom of the eighth. Still a, or now a five to one game. Now Wilbur Wood is going to be done. He has pitched his seven innings. So we say goodbye to Wilbur Wood. And let's see, Carew, Heisel, and Ford. Actually, you know what? Wilbur Wood's going to pitch to Carew, and that's going to be it. They're going to go lefty on lefty with Carew, and then they're going to go to the bullpen and bring in. Bart Johnson. So Bart Johnson will be coming on. No relation to Tom Johnson. But Bart Johnson will be coming on right after Wilbur Wood faces Carew. Lefty on lefty. 4-10. 4-10 is a ground ball to first. That's going to be an easy play for Lamar Johnson. And Carew has been held to 1-3 for three in this game. So definitely a good deal there. Wilbur Wood will now leave. And Bart Johnson will be coming on for the Sox. Bart Johnson, a long reliever and a starter. 4-5 and five with a 4-1 ERA and two saves. Of course, this is not a save situation. But he will be coming on. Let's check the outing for Wilbur Wood. 7 and a third. He faces 30 batters. Gives up one run, which was earned. And let's check his hits. One, two, three. I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. Five. I've got him for five hits. Five hits. And let's check walks and strikeouts. He intentionally walked a batter here. Walk here, walk here. So that's three walks. Two walks, one intentional. And his strikeouts, one, two, three. Just got him for three. So three and three. Three walks, three strikeouts. All right. Now we're ready to go. Larry Heisel facing Bart Johnson. Five, three. Ground ball pitcher X. Bart Johnson is a three, E16. So a three, E16. Three and a 13 will definitely be where you can get to it. So let's see. That is a 12, so an E16 for a pitcher and a 12. 
And there it is right there, E1. E16 pitcher rating, a 12 is right there. So it's a one base error. One base error on Bart Johnson. So first batter he faces, he boots the ball. That's the second error turned in by the White Sox. Not a good way to start your inning or to start your debut in the inning. One on, one out for Disco Dan. 5-7, five, 5-7, seven, five, seven. that's a solid base hit there. 1-13 to is a double, 14-20 to 20 is a single. It's a 10, it's a double, two stars. So runners are at second and third with only one out. And now the White Sox bullpen is again frantically loosening. You got lefty Dave Hamilton and you got righty Laren Legro, the closer. So you got two short relievers coming up. Cusick is up, infield's going to play back. They want to get the out, they'll give up the run. 2-7, 2-7, struck him out. May not have to. Cusick, down on strikes. Two down. Cusick is retired. In case you're wondering why I didn't pinch hit for Cusick, he is a 254 hitter with 12 home runs in real life, so good chance he'd get a hit there. Although he, he is over 3 in this game. Here's Weiniger, 6-10. 6-10, fly ball center field, excess Chet Lemon. He gets another chance. He's a 3-E-13. Can he get to this one? 3-12, he'll get to that. Uh, and E-13 is the question. E-13, and that is an 11. E th whoops, wrong side. Get the outfield out here. It's an 11, and he's an E-13. There is no 11. There's a 15, 17, 16, and 18, but no 11. So it's a good play for Chet Lemon. He hauls it in, and... Again, the Twins leave a couple runners on, much to this, the dismay of their manager, Gene Mock, and very uncharacteristic of the Twins themselves. So, what are you going to do? All right, so Johnson back out, try to finish out the ball game for the Twins. Oscar Gamble now. Sox trying to protect a 5-1 one, one lead here. Try to get some insurance if they need it. 3-7. Lead off walk. That's a good way to start. So Oscar Gamble. Lead off walk. And that brings up Richie Zisk. The DH. 1-7. One, 1-7 seven. One, seven struck him out. So One away for George Orta. 3-9 for Orta against a righty. Ground ball shortstop A. That's going to be a 6-4-3 double play. And that will finish off Tom Johnson. His night is done. He goes an inning in the third. Or actually, let's see here. Is it inning in the third? No, check that. Two. He goes two full innings. So two, two full innings for Johnson. Fix that. Ooh, let me fix that. Two full innings for Johnson. So let's see, he faced, he came in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine batters faced. He gave up one, two, three hits, all of them extra base hits, two doubles and a triple. He walked one, struck out one. And he's responsible for two runs. All earned. All right. Now we go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Twinks. Bart Johnson is going to stay in there, try to finish things out. If he gets into trouble, of course, they do have Laren Legro and Dave Hamilton light tossing in the bullpen. Both of them are like pseudo-closers. But right now, it's Roy Smalley. Might get a pinch hitter for Bob Randall. I do believe we will. Ooh, I got white out all over my die there. How did that happen? Ooh, let me fix this. Do I have another die? I'm going to have to use the blue die just temporarily because somehow when I was putting that white out there, something got on my hand, which in turn got on the dice. So let's re-roll that, folks. <laughs> that was messy. I... I don't think I've ever seen that where whiteout got all over the die there, so I'll have to put that on the disabled list for the day. 
So it's going to be a red, white, and blue day here for the ninth inning. Smalley to 3-7. Three, 3-7 seven. Three, seven for Smalley. It's a leadoff walk. So leadoff walk. And Bob Lemon pacing nervously because he doesn't want to give up this lead. So Bob Randall is up, but he's going to be pinch hit for. And they're going to go to a lefty pinch hitter. And the lefty pinch hitter is going to be Glenn Adams. So Glenn Adams is your pinch hitter. Glenn Adams. And if the game happens to go extra innings, they of course have other second basemen. Rob Wilfong for one. That could play second base. All right, here's Adams against Johnson. Get a 1-4. Ground ball pitcher B, it's a fielder's choice. Call it a 1-6 fielder's choice. Adams is retired. Back to the top of the order for Bostock. It'll be Bostock and then Terrell. Might get a pinch hitter for Terrell as well. I think we would. Almost certainly get a pinch hitter for Terrell. So here's Bostock. One, I'm sorry, three, four. I gotta remember the white dies, the lead die. Three, four. Three, four. One to 15 is a home run. 16 to 20 is a triple. That is a triple for Lyman Bostock. And that puts the Twins on the board again. Five to two, they've cut the lead. And that may be all for Bart Johnson. It's now with Terrell coming up. Gene Mock going to his bench once again. We'll pull out a pinch hitter. And it's going to be... No relation to Julia, but Rich Childs. The lefty, Rich Childs, is in. And they are going to go encounter that move with the move to the left-handed reliever Dave Hamilton. So Dave Hamilton will be coming on. So things churning here. Childs the DH. I'm sorry the pinch hitter. But he is going to be having to face the left-hander Dave Hamilton. Unless Mock wants to counter that move with a right-handed pinch hitter. Which they could do. They do have Although the right-handed pinch hitter, the right-handed hitters aren't very good. So I think they're going to have to stick. Backup catcher Glenn Borgman would be the best one they've got. So I think they're going to stick with Rich Childs. They're going to have to due to lack of options. So here's Hamilton facing Johnson, or Hamilton facing uh, Childs. 6-6, six, six, lefty on lefty. 6-6 six, six is a strikeout. I apologize for the red, white, and blue thing. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit too. But my red dye, getting the whiteout treatment, has got to be fixed. So I have to fix that for the next game. So Childs out on strikes. And now it's down to Rod Carew for the Twins. Last chance for the Twinks. They trail it 5-2. to two. Carew, a lefty on lefty, 1-8. And that's a solid single. We're not doing clutch, so the single stands. That is an RBI single for Rod Carew. Cuts the lead to 5-3. to three. That run is charged to Bart Johnson. You can close the book on him. But it is now a 5-3 to three game with Larry Heisel coming up. And Carew's at first base. He's not going to run because his run doesn't really mean anything. But with Heisel coming up, and Bob Lemons didn't want to have to do this, but he's going to have to go to his... Right-handed closer, Laren Legro to try to finish out this ball game. Was not expecting to have to use all his guys like this, but he is. So for Hamilton, he pitches a third of an inning. I'll do Johnson later. A third of an inning, uh, one hit, faced two batters, gave up a hit. The run, Carew, Carew's run would be charged to him if he scores. Did get a strikeout. So... Here we go, Larry Heisel facing Laren Legro with Carew at first. Heisel is the tie and run. We got a 6-7. Six, 6-7 seven. Six, seven against Legro. Struck him out. That's the ball game. So Laren Legro comes in, faces one batter, and gets him on a strikeout. Strikes out the dangerous Larry Heisel to get the save. The win goes to Wilbur Wood. The loss goes to Thormisgard. 
And how about that? Faces one batter and got him out. So talk about doing the job. Both those runs in the ninth charge to Bart Johnson. I'll worry about his stuff later. But let's look at the line score. That's the most important thing going on right now is the final scoring. Let's move these things out of the way so we can get the score sheet out here a little bit where you can see it. The line score, I should say. All right, so for the Sox, five runs. And they did make two errors, which was uncharacteristic of them. For the Twins, three runs. So let's check the hits. Well, we got to do Bart Johnson's hits, so we might as well do him too. One hit, two hits, three hits. No, two hits. Two hits off of Bart Johnson. So it's eight hits total for the Twins. Three, eight, and O. Oh. And for the Sox, they got 13 hits. Five, 13, and two. So let's check the left on base for the Twins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They left ten on base. For the Sox, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Got him for eleven left on base. And Tabby is crying, so I gotta hurry this up, I guess. Alright, so with that win, the Sox and this these stats are complete through the day because I'd already pre-played the other games. So the Sox with the win go to 36 and 31 and pulled within six games. So they're now 36 and 31. Let's update this. 36 and 31. Twins go to 39 and 30 and fall to four games back. So that's the updated standings through the end of June 24th. Twins drop to four games back, 39 and 30 record. Sox 36 and 31. They are six games back. Two games back of those twins. And they have two more games in Minnesota to try to make hay. So player of the game to me is Wilbur Wood for his outstanding pitching performance holding this powerful twins lineup to one run through seven innings. So to me he's the undoubted uh, leader of that although Soderholm was three for four with uh, you know some key hits. But to me Wilbur Wood and his pitching is what did it. Set the tone early by get that one run the first and, and put the threw the uh, anchor out after that and just kept the Twins off the board completely. So that's going to do it from here. Like I said, Sox now improved to 36 and 31. And your 1977 Chicago White Sox replay. Game 67 is in the books. I'm going to play the other two against the Twins on the computer offline. And then we'll come back for the next game, which is going to be back in Comiskey against the Seattle Mariners. So I believe it'll be a first look at the Seattle Mariners. So that's going to do it from here. Hope you enjoyed that presentation of Stratomatic 1977 White Sox baseball. And until next time, enjoy playing every game you choose to play, however you choose to play it. And just before we leave, we do have a visitor. So before we go... Tabby wants to wish everybody well and hopes to see you next time. So we will see you all, me and Tabby, we'll see you all down the road.